Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a comic book review of House of Slaughter, issue number two, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. We begin this issue with Jason the Force. It's dark, eerie, and he lights up a fire to cook fish. His totem is a fox where his monster is inside. Aaron sneaks behind Jace with his sword drawn out. You know what he's about to do. Jace is surprised that the House of Slaughter sent Aaron to end him. Don't tell me they sent you, Jace questions. Aaron's like, of course they did. No more running, I have my orders. Jace turns around casually as if he knows Aaron's not gonna follow through with this order. Aaron tells him to turn back around and Jace tells Aaron he looks fancy in the suit. You fancy, huh? As he acknowledges and reflects on time and how many years it's been, we get a flashback of young Aaron in the car with his seatbelt fastened after what seems to be a car wreck. He wakes up to a man trying to rescue him. As Aaron tries to turn to look to his parents to save him the grief for later, the guy tells Aaron to look at him, follow his voice, and to move slowly as he tries to rescue Aaron. Aaron calls out to his mom and dad. He wakes up and it was a dream or a nightmare, whatever you want to call it. He wakes up and looks over at Jace's bed and sees him talking in his sleep. After asking if he's okay and he doesn't get a response, the totem, the fox inside his backpack begins to speak in dialogue that's not understandable. Jace wakes up and asks Aaron, what's he doing? You, 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 you're back and you were talking your sleepy response. Jace is grumpy and tired from being woke up at 5 in the morning. That's my totem in my backpack, yo. You want to bring your totem and we'll have a little tea party? <laughs> the brother's tone makes Aaron shrink in embarrassment. They go back to sleep. Don't touch my stuff, Jace adds. Inside the House of Slaughter, Cecilia gives a speech about tradition and upholding the order of the St. George. There will always be monsters and there will always be those who hunt. It's their sacred oath that binds them to the mission. The order and the order of the St. George, signified by the unholy bond between Hunter and Totem. Since Jace is a stranger transferred from a different house, he has to get initiated. That's kind of an eerie cult setting right there. Now we go to a flashback of earlier that day where Jace is sitting on the bench to his own self. Eric walks up to him and apologizes for Jace for trying to go through his stuff earlier. He adds that it was messed up and what Jace did defending him from those girls in the last issue was pretty cool. And he promises not to go through his stuff again. Helen from the previous issue along with Cecilia and the other girls tell the two to stop fraternizing and for Jace to get ready for his initiation or what they call the untethering. Jace tells Aaron to keep his space and Aaron's reminded that the house of slaughter is not where one makes friends. Back to the initiation or the untethering. Either way, it doesn't sound good in that setting. Cecilia tells the crowd that there is a stranger in this house. If Jace is that stranger, she asks him to step inside the salt circle. They chant, stranger, stranger, stranger. Since Jace is sworn into another house, his bond means nothing to the house of slaughter, so he must be untethered. Jace denounces his oath from his previous house and pledges his allegiance to the house of slaughter. He looks at his totem, the fox, as the untethering begins. Here we get an understanding why it's important for them to control and dampen their emotions. By doing so, the monster can't use that against them. Kind of like It, the movie It, the more you control your fear around Pennywise, Pennywise can't feed off of that. It's cool that we see a younger Erica Slaughter and Aaron working together on trying to channel the monster spirit. Clearly they're distracted, or more so, Aaron's distracted, and Jessica lets them both know that last time they both unleashed a monster in the house. But Aaron's attitude and distraction's throwing him off. What's throwing him off, you may ask? It's the event where Jessica gave Aaron a life or death choice from issue number one. You can check out the review if you like. Playlist at the end of this video. And also, if you want to add this comic book to your collection, link in description as well. As they discuss and Aaron gets his mojo back, if you will, he relaxes, lets go, and goes into some kind of hypnosis trance. Establishing this is how they unleash the monster from the totem and bond with it. Back to Jace's initiation. Cecilia has Jace scissors to untether his totem, and if he survives, his bond will be anew and to the house of slaughter. He cuts the totem's neck. His monster emerges and he is pissed. He throws every little thing to knock him off his game, saying, you only bound me when I was weak. I'm stronger now, boy. I survived and tasted your fears and chewed on your trauma. In other words, that ass is mine. Jace controls his emotions tells the monster that it may be true but you do not call me boy no more and gets to work on this mofo after slicing and dicing the monster he bonds with again and now his allegiance is to the house of slaughter it's pretty cool how the other monsters try to convince jace in this state of 
trans or tra or whatnot that he that he's dead 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 they all said he's dead and he overcomes that by his belief and will alone now jace is jay slaughter he is initiated this time around jace is having bad dreams or nightmares again and Aaron fights the urge to avoid a repeat of last time when he goes to check on him jace grabs his wrist and yeah, that, that happens. So 15 years later, as Jason's reflecting, it's funny how time does this to us, whether it's tethered to pain. Aaron ain't trying to hear all that. Aaron's like, excuse me, I did not take a bus across the entire Midwest for your passive aggressive comments over dinner. Damn it, I'm here to kill you. Jason's just kind of just making sly comments, off comments. But then again, it's his totem trying to distract him for revenge for what happened to 15 years ago when he had to get reinitiated and untethered and previously, but Aaron sees it and now his hunt is complete. He has to kill that monster where he left off in the previous issue. And that's where the book ends. I gotta say, I had a fun time reading this book. I, 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 I'm not too sure about the back and forth transformation or the flashbacks, but I understand why that may have been necessary to fully grasp the entire story. Entertaining read, you'll dig this book. Link in description if you wanna add this comic book to your comic book collection. With that being said, House of Slaughter, issue number two. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy and don't be stingy. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.